My name is Peter Landris. I'm an ecologist. I work for the Forest Service. I work in wilderness management, so I get to spend a lot of time outdoors in nice, beautiful places. I do a lot of mountaineering, skiing, uh, backcountry skiing, and hiking, also running um, for exercise. So starting about 10 or 12 years ago, uh, it started becoming increasingly difficult to run just because of lower back pain. And I had no idea what was going on with it, just it was, it was hurting. And so I started uh, going to a series of different PTs. I, eventually I saw seven different PTs, and each of those people that I saw, I had temporary relief from the back pain, but within a month or two it came right back. And then finally uh, I started going to uh, back surgeons, and they said, yeah, we can fix this. We'll just fuse your, um, your vertebrae and we'll fix the problem. Um, but I was reluctant to do that and went to a doctor of osteopathy, Glenn Heyman, and he looked at my MRI and my x-rays and he said, yes, your back definitely has some problems, but the symptoms that you're manifesting I don't think are consistent anatomically and physiologically with what I see. I first saw Peter, I think it was in 2006 or early 2007, and he came in as a last resort. I am often the, the last physician a patient would see before potentially going to surgery. And he had significant right uh, sacroiliac area, right buttock pain, and was desperate to determine if there was anything else he could do to avoid surgery. The pain became increasingly severe and I finally got to the point where I literally could not walk more than 50 feet at a time. Um, so for a person who considered myself an active person, um, it, this was a real problem. Um, and even if I wasn't an active person, this would be a problem, but it, it completely prevented me from doing everything that I had wanted to do. It did seem as if the, the pain was from the, the sacroiliac joint to piriformis muscle, his imbalance through the right buttock and hip girdle muscles, and it didn't really line up exactly as you'd expect from his MRI. So there was a mismatch. And so we initially, well, we talked about what he could do that would be different. and. I know that we started with a couple of interventional procedures, the sacroiliac joint injections, the muscle injections, piriformis muscle injection, and we sent him to physical therapy. And I said, well, I think I said, there's only one physical therapist I would go to <laughs> for this kind of problem. So Peter came to me initially not being able to walk hardly um, 50, 50 feet. I remember they kind of celebrated the day when he could make it from the parking lot into the PT clinic without pain. We had a, a like high five, that was great. Um, and we trained him hard and he is a very diligent person as far as doing his home program and, and really concentrating on the movement and doing everything you ask him to do. He did really well with Pilates, but Pilates only took him to a certain point and he wanted to return to upright activity, hiking, mountaineering, um, skiing. And so when the Coraline came to us, it was a perfect opportunity to take Peter to the next level. And, uh, you know, I, I was amazed by the leaps and bounds we were able to take Peter as far as his function and his strength and his ability to, to do more and more. Um, and Coraline really allowed him to organize in that upright position with the reciprocal movement patterns. Um, and challenge him at levels that, that he needed to be challenged at for the things he wanted to do to make his quality of life what it, he wanted his quality of life. Not everybody wants to mountaineer and do 7,000 feet in one day, but that's what makes Peter's life high quality and that's what was important to him and so we needed to figure out how to get him there. And Coraline really allowed him to do that. I would advocate that all physical therapists at least uh, look at a, what a Coraline machine can do for their um, patients in a clinical setting. Um, it, for me, it's been an absolute um, savior for me to be able to continue to do the activities that I love and enjoy doing. 
people who feel really healthy um, oftentimes feel that they don't need to do anything because they're healthy. So why should I do anything? Because everything is fine right now. Um, I think I'm kind of living proof of the, the falseness of that idea. Um, I was very active. I'm not overweight. I've never been a smoker. I'm not a drinker. You know, I'm kind of this paragon of health. And shit hit the fan. Uh, an accumulation of stresses and strains over time finally manifested themselves in a way that was a total surprise to me. I never would have thought of that. And so maintenance is hard. Um, most people don't do things until they're slapped in the face and an injury happens. And my goal now is to prevent the injuries from happening. So even though if I were to feel totally healthy right now, which I do feel totally healthy right now, um, doing something like Coraline keeps me healthy and then prevents injury. And that to me is absolutely the most important things possible.